Hold on to your seats, folks, because we've got some jaw-dropping news about Kanye West that's bound to leave you reeling. It appears that the air between Kanye and his protégés is thick with tension and resentment, hinting at a storm brewing beneath the surface. Artists like Kid Cudi, who once flourished under his influence but now find themselves distanced. So what exactly happened? We have all the tea. By 2013, Kid Cudi decided to leave Kanye West's label, citing business reasons and emphasizing that there were no hard feelings. However, trouble started brewing within a year of their split. Tensions arose when Cudi discovered he was featured on a track on Kanye's Yeezus album without his permission. Initially, Cudi didn't mind, but over time, it bothered him. In a 2014 interview, he explained that the vocals he provided were from a couple of years earlier. Kid Cudi and Kanye West initially collaborated despite tensions, with a public feud arising in 2016. They reconciled during Cudi's rehab stint, collaborating on Kid See Ghosts and Donda. However, a trivial incident involving Pete Davidson led to an unexpected rift, causing Cudi to officially end ties with Kanye in August 2022, expressing doubts about reconciliation. Travis Scott, once mentored by Kanye West despite not being formally signed to good music, faced a rift when Kanye perceived Drake's lyrics in Travis's sicko mode as digs at him. The tension intensified when Travis, dating Kylie Jenner, collaborated with Drake, leading to public criticism from Kanye. Despite a truce and apparent reconciliation on Donda, Kanye continued to assert his mentorship and father figure role, emphasizing his dominance. In the original version of Life of the Party, Kanye accused Travis of pandering to white audiences, revealing differing perspectives among Kanye's protégés. Saihai the Prince, a good music signee since 2010, initially valued the platform Kanye provided and played a significant role as a ghostwriter for Kanye's projects. However, he grew weary of working behind the scenes. Before releasing Elephant in the Room, where he criticized Kanye, Pusha T, and Tiana Taylor, Saihai initially claimed it was for a collaborative project. Later, he clarified it was a concept collaboration for a Dr. Dre and Eminem album, with Kanye envisioning an Eminem-Dre dynamic. The strain in Sai High the Prince's relationship with Kanye West stemmed from Sai High's ghostwriting contributions on Sicko Mode, which included a sneak diss towards Kanye. Feeling that his loyalty was being tested, Sai High noticed Kanye attributing the song to him, causing discomfort in their friendship. The fallout continued when, on the unreleased version of Life of the Party from Donda, Kanye suggested he would stop royalties for new contributions to Kanye's songs. Despite being seen as a rising star under Kanye West's mentorship, Big Sean faced public disapproval on Drink Champs, with Kanye disowning him and claiming credit for his success. Big Sean expressed hurt and frustration, citing issues with his record deal and missing millions, eventually voicing his grievances on Benny the Butcher's Timeless. After leaving Good Music, Big Sean experienced a resurgence with the release of Detroit 2, one of his best albums in years. However, he wasn't the only one with something to prove. The lead producer, Hit Boy, also had a point to make, given his history with Kanye West. Hit Boy claimed that everything was fine between them until he started producing for Beyonce. Kanye reportedly told Hit Boy face to face that he stopped picking his beats because of his collaboration with Beyonce. Despite contributing to hits like Paris and working on various projects for Kanye's label, Good Music, Hitboy felt betrayed by the sudden change in attitude. Transitioning from receiving mentorship and respect from Kanye to being left to fend for himself was challenging for Hitboy. The lack of public acknowledgement for his work, especially during interviews, bothered him, leading to buried emotions for years. Despite Kanye's initial claim that his issue with Hitboy wasn't about him working with Beyonce, they eventually found common ground, collaborating on the track, Easy, featuring the game. However, Hit Boy had to struggle to regain a favorable position after being cast aside by Kanye. On the other hand, Tiana Taylor's experience with good music was less fortunate. Signing with the label in 2012, her career failed to take off as expected. Over eight years, she released three albums, and by the time her last one launched, she explicitly wanted out of her contract. The trouble began in 2018, marking the start of the problems that eventually led to her departure from the music business. Tiana Taylor's KTSE album, meant to be Kanye's seven-track grand finale, revealed issues of mishandling and lack of promotion, marking a turning point in their relationship. Frustrated with feeling underappreciated at good music, 
Tiana announced the album as her final record, citing an inability to work within the label's framework. The uncertainty surrounding Good Music's distribution deal expiring in 2022 raises questions about Kanye's role as a label owner and the challenges within the label, as seen in Tiana's departure. Stay tuned. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.